Today we're going to be talking about graphing from the factored form. So the first thing we're going to deal with is finding coordinates. So here's a graph of a function w defined by w of x equals one, the quantity x plus 1.6 times the quantity x minus 2. Three points on the graph are labeled. So we need to find the values of a, b, c, d, e, and f. And then we need to be prepared to explain our reasoning for that. So if we're looking at this, and we're trying to figure out what these different values are. If we're looking at this equation, okay, we have x plus 1.6 and x minus 2. Well, if we were to solve those to get our zeros here, if we were to solve those, then this, if you set it equal to 0, we would get x equals negative 1.6. And if we um, set this one equal to 0, the x minus 2 equals 0, by adding 2 to both sides, we would get x equals 2. So those, since those are our zeros happening here, those are going to be the x coordinates. So since x is negative 1 and 6 tenths here, that means that our a value is going to be negative 1 and 6 tenths. And C is the x-coordinate of this point, and that's a positive 2. And the reason for those, again, is because those are the x-coordinates of our zeros. When we set each of those pieces equal to 0 and solve, that's what we get. Since those are zeros, any point on the x-axis gives us a y-coordinate of 0. So B and D must both equal 0 because of them being x-intercepts. Okay. In terms of letters E and F, since we know that um, this point is the y-intercept, that tells us that E needs to be 0, because any point on the y-axis has an x-coordinate of 0. To figure out what letter F is, that's where we can plug in 0 for x and see what we get. So if we have 0 plus 1.6, times 0 minus 2, so this is what f is going to equal, we would get 1.6 times negative 2, which means that we get negative 3.2. So negative 3.2 or negative 3 and 2 tenths would be our answer there, and those are all of our values. The next thing we're looking is comparing two functions. So we have two functions given to us. f of x equals x times the quantity x plus 4, and g of x equals x times the quantity x minus 4. So they're giving us tables to complete for both functions. After that, we need to determine the x-intercepts and the vertex of each graph. So I went ahead and plugged in all of these numbers, and I calculated what they would be. So to catch you up to where I am. If negative 5 is plugged in for x here, that's going to be negative 5. Here, negative 5 plus 4 is a negative 1. Negative 5 times negative 1 is a positive 5. Okay, so all I did is I plugged in this x value for x here, and then calculated what the corresponding y coordinate or y value would be. Now, using what we just talked about in the warm-up, x-intercepts mean that they're going to cross the x-axis, and any point that's on the x-axis is going to have a y-coordinate of 0. So that means that negative 4, 0 and 0, 0 from our table are going to be the ones that are x-intercepts. They cross the x-axis. In terms of our vertex, if we're looking at these or imagining them being plotted, remember the vertex is your point of inflection where it's going to change from decreasing to increasing or increasing to, to decreasing. And so as I'm looking at these, I notice that the numbers are decreasing until they get to negative 4, and then they start increasing again. That means at the point negative 2, negative 4, that's our vertex, our point of inflection. Doing that same information over here with g of x, 
again, all I did is I plugged in these values for x up here in the g of x function and then um, evaluated those. So for x-intercepts, again, that's where we want the y-coordinate to be 0. So that's happening here. And we've seen that earlier this school year. So we have 0, 0, and 4, 0 from our table. And the vertex is where we have that change in direction, the point of inflection. So we're getting smaller. And then we start increasing again. So we start getting bigger. That means our vertex is going to be at the point 2, negative 4. Okay, now that we have this, it asks us to plot all of the points from the tables on the same coordinate plane. So I went ahead and did that, where all of the f of x points are in black, and all of the g of x points are in blue. Okay, so now that we have these and we can tell which one's which, we need to make a couple of observations about how the two graphs compare. So what things do you notice? So they share the point 0, 0. That's something they have in common. It appears that there's a reflection across the y-axis. So if you're looking at those values, um, for example, here we had positive 545 on the g of x uh, table. We have negative 5, positive 45. So those things are reflection across the y-axis. So those are two. We also have that both vertices have a y-coordinate of negative 4 and that each function mirrors itself through the vertex. So if we're looking at the vertex just of the f of x function, it's a mirror that these two, these two, these two, and it will keep going, have the same y-coordinate. And the same happens for g of x as well. All right, so what do we need to sketch a graph? The functions f, g, and h are given. Predict the x-intercepts and the x-coordinate of the vertex for each function. So if we're looking at f of x equals the quantity x plus 3 times the quantity x minus 5, our x-intercepts, remember that's going to be where the um, x value, sorry, the y value is 0. So we can set each of these equal to 0 and see what they would give us. So I'm going to draw a little line here to kind of keep my work separate. So I would have x plus 3 equals 0, and I would have x minus 5 equals 0. So this is going to mean that x equals negative 3, and this would mean that x would equal positive 5. So our x-intercepts would happen at negative 3, 0, and positive 5, 0. In terms of our x-coordinate of the vertex, the vertex of any of these parabolas happens halfway between these two things. So if we're looking from negative, five, negative 3 to 5, that's a total of 8 spaces. Half of that would be 4 spaces. So if we're halfway, or sorry, if we're going 4 spaces from either one of these inward, we're going to have an x-coordinate of 1. For g of x, so I'm going to kind of draw a line like this so I can have a little bit of space to work. Um, we're going to set 2 of x, 2x equal to 0. When we solve that by dividing by 2 on both sides, we get x equals 0. And if we have x minus 3 equals 0, that's going to give us x equals a positive 3. So your x-intercepts there would be 0, 0, and positive 3, 0. Here, those are three spaces apart from each other. So the x-coordinate of the vertex needs to be halfway in between that. So this would be three spaces. Cut that in half. It's one and a half. If I count one and a half spaces in from 0 or 3, I would be at one and a half. Last one here, if we have um, h of x equals the quantity x plus 4 times the quantity 4 minus x. So if I have x plus 4 equals 0, that's going to tell us that x equals negative 4. And if I have 4 minus x equals 0, I can just add the x over and I would get x equals positive 4. That means we're going to have x-intercepts at um, negative 4, 0 and positive 4, 0. Negative 4 and positive 4 are 8 spaces away from each other. Cut that in half. 
that's four. And if I'm going four spaces in from either of those, that would be zero. Okay, so it says use graphing technology to graph these functions. So in Desmos, you can see here that I have those three functions graphed. They are different colors. And so then if we look at the graph of this, um, you can see that we have negative four, zero, positive four, zero. The x coordinate of our vertex is down here at zero. And you could do the same thing with all of those other functions to see what happens. Okay. So now we need to, without graphing, using graphing technology, so that means without using our calculator, we want to sketch a graph that represents the equation y equals x minus 7 times the quantity x plus 11 and show the x-intercepts and the vertex, okay? So then we're going to think about how to find the y-coordinate of the vertex and be prepared to explain our reasoning. So we're going to talk about all of that. Okay, so we're going to start with x-intercepts. So for x-intercepts, remember that means we're setting each of these pieces equal to zero. So if I have x minus 7 equals zero and x plus 11 equals zero, here we would get x equals 7. And here we would get x equals negative 11. So our x-intercepts are going to be at the point 7, 0 and negative 11, 0. So 7, 0. Now these are counting by 2s. So here's 6. 7 would be right in the middle of that. And then negative 11 would be halfway between negative 10 and negative 12. For the vertex, we know that we need to be halfway in between these two things. So from negative 11 to 7 is 18 spaces. Cut that in half, it's 9. So if I am um, 9 spaces away from either of these, that means that our vertex, our vertex is going to have an x-coordinate of negative 2. Now that we know that information, we can plug that negative two. So we, we're trying to find what the y coordinate is. So negative two minus seven, and then we're gonna multiply that by negative two plus 11. So that means that we would have negative nine times positive nine, which would give us negative 81. So our vertex is gonna be happening at the point negative two, negative 81. So negative two, negative 81 is gonna be about right there, okay? And then we can connect these the best we can, okay? And then it is something that after we have it graphed and all figured out, you could graph it again in Desmos to double check that that's what it is, okay? So x-intercepts need to make sure that they have the x, or the y-coordinate is zero, the vertex is equidistant from those, so that means that it's in the center of both of those things as well. And that's it.